one of these for some time this is called a satara okay it's it's used for cutting meat i think it's a butchery tool really but i've been watching a lot of youtube videos and people have these so we finally got one today
My name is Emanuela. Most of the people that know me know that I have Polish origin and they find it also very interesting. So I like to talk about it all the time and I like to just invite them to meet us, to get more into Polish culture because it's very interesting, like any Slavic. But actually, I think it's most important, more and more special because it's mine, like any Slavic culture. But it's who I am and I hope to continue with that when I give birth to my kids and be in marriage and so, because I think it's very important to continue with that. Unfortunately, I currently speak only Serbian and German and English. I'm about to learn Polish. I started actually learning, so I'm on some basic level of speaking. They do say that a culture that moves from its origins to somewhere else could lose its language, it could lose a lot of things, but one thing it never, ever loses is food. I've just seen those tables groaning with the weight of pierogi. I never knew you could have a fruit pierogi. Is this something special or is it something that you would eat in a family setting during the month? Yes, in my family we used to eat that even when I was little. My uh, grandma or babcha used to make them. I love the most pierogi with cheese, so that, that's probably the, the, the specialty. And I think that it is very special because uh, none of the other cultures here in Bosnia don't have it. Actually, maybe uh, Ukrainians and Russians, but this is some kind of a festival, and I think that's why we are so recognized and people come to try and see. Finally, I have to ask you this. I was speaking to people from the Italian community that lives just outside Lactashi, and they said the sad thing for them is that their Italianism, if I can use such a word, is going year on year. It, it seems to be drifting away. And, you know, maybe in 20 years there won't be anything left apart from pages in a history book. How is it with the Polish community? Well, it depends on... Uh new generations actually. I'm one of them so I try to write new pages I think I hope actually but I think it depends on new generations and they uh, have a big mission to complete so we can continue with our culture and le don't let it uh, disappear from Bosnia because Bosnia is some kind of cultural mosaic. We are not, not, the, only, not, uh, not the only national minority here so we have to keep it and stay together. Kiedy byłam różą dla twojego serca, kiedy byłam różą twoją, czy nie jestem dziś, gdy się przyglądasz mi, nie kobietu Bóg mi da. Kiedyś różą byłam, lecz nie jestem teraz. Od czasu do czasu, jakbym słyszała nadal, jak przychodzisz przez mój próg. Miłuj od czasu do czasu, choć wiem, że nie mam prawa, bo nie jestem twoja już. Kiedyś różą była, lecz nie jestem teraz. We've been in the garden uh, and harvesting as much of the tomatoes as we possibly can. Now, I don't know how many kilos we've had, but I can tell you if we measure it in big buckets, there have been a lot of big buckets. So what happens to tomatoes here? Well, uh, tomatoes are used a lot in salads. They're cut up, put with onions um, and just eaten like that. Uh, they get put in a lot of recipes as well through the use of tomato sauce. So Tamara's been taking all these uh, tomatoes and with some help from her mum and her dad and me too, of course. Uh, what we do is that we cut the tomatoes up initially, take out the uh, hard bits uh, and then put it into a large pot and boil it together with some herbs. Uh, I think Tamara put some lemon with it this year. And when all that is finished, it is then put through uh, a strainer, a sieve if you like, using a nice wooden device, a very basic wooden device called a pathirka. So these are the finer bits being done. Yeah. Yeah. What is the name of this again? Is it called a pastir? 
This is a pasirka. 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 See, my language is absolutely useless. So this is wooden. It has a wheel. Do you see the wheel? And all you do is you keep pressing through the grid at the bottom. So all you get is juice out of there. So these are the tomatoes that Tamara's mother just washed and cooked. And we're going to turn them into sauce today. So, yeah, good few hours, but it will be fun. So all the tomatoes have been done outside, yes? Yes. What's next? Now we boil it. And you've put some? I put some uh, celery and parsley and I'm going to put some garlic as well. This will boil up and then we're going to make sure that we've got no celery pieces or other stuff. And then they'll be put into pasteurized jars or bottles. You want to use these bottles this time, don't you? Yeah, I'll pasteurize them. So we're going to pasteurize these, clean them out, and then we'll show you how we fill up the containers and Tam's super trick on how she keeps the lids clean. Oh, smoke. Heat. Bottles. This time, not glasses. And how long do we... 100 Celsius for 10 minutes. 100 Celsius for 10 minutes. The sauce is now bubbling. And then it will be switched off, cooled down a bit, strained, and then put into those sterilized bottles. God. in these glasses first? Uh, Sun-dried tomatoes. These are the ones you've done yourself? Yes. How difficult was it? Uh, not difficult. Lots of these actually turn black. They oxidize so I throw them out. And you just left these out into our sun? Yes, for five days. For five days? Yeah. At night you have to put them back in the... In I don't the want to eat them because it's, it's, it's such so much work. 
And then they I go down. That's why they're so expensive. Yeah. And we'll make them in olive oil. So what are you going to do today with them? Today we blanch them for five minutes in uh, water and uh, half a cup of apple vinegar. So One liter of water. No more cold water. Yes, you bring to boil, then you add half a cup apple cider vinegar. Go on, do, do it. Sirce. 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 No, sirce. Sirce. <laughs> now I know why they're so expensive. But they look really nice. From uh, two kilos, you get about 200 grams. 200 grams from two kilos. Yes. Wow. And were these just normal tomatoes or cherry tomatoes? Or? Pure cherry tomatoes. All cherries. Because we don't want to, we don't know what to do with them for winter. So. You're a creative girl, aren't you? Yeah, I've seen this one Italiano guy doing it, and I love it. And it's good on a bread, or you can make pasta with it. Nice. But you have to boil them in the vinegar to preserve them for longer. Half a cup of apple cider vinegar. Sitcha. Sitcha. Yes. Sitcha. I got that right. There's the bubbling water. And this is, you said, to blanch them? Yeah, take me nota. Mm -hmm. You were getting annoyed at one point though, weren't you? Because some of them turned black. Yeah, I'd throw them out. Maybe they haven't been healthy in the first place. Uh -huh. So how, how long did they sit in here, did you say? Five minutes. Five minutes. Five minutes. Eight minutes is up. So skin down. Tam says that's the better way to do it. So we'll take these to my office because it's, I think, a better environment, yeah? No, they should dry for a few hours and then we'll finish them off. Okay. In olive oil, spices. There we go, somewhere safe, away from the fly. In David's office. How cool. Are you happy with this? I think I time? overboiled them. Uh, five minutes is okay if you're using Roma tomatoes or um, pellet. But okay. Next time I'll just blanch them for a few seconds and that's it. Now it's time to put these guys in a jar. Do they look dry enough? Yeah, I think they are. Okay. This is my first time making this. So don't judge me. So what's the procedure then? You layer it now. So a layer of dried tomato. Malo dried tomato, malo spices, and then again, and then we forgot the main thing. The main ingredient, I hope I have enough. Carapelli oil. Extra virgin. Let's start. I have two different kinds. These are more skinny. So I'm going to mix them up. How many jars can we make from all this? <laughs> Not many, trust me. But we make different flavors. This is garlic. Garlic now. Mm -hmm. Bay leaf? Near bay leaf. Basil. Basil. Mm -hmm. Okay, no more tomatoes. So it's layer upon layer. Mother. Mm. You do however you want. Mm -hmm. it smells really nice here actually. They should taste. Here's the medallion.
which was that one? Bay leaf. Bay leaf. My favorite spice. One of my favorite spices. Smell of garlic. You know I like garlic. I could live on garlic. This is a lot of work, but it's worth it. You see, they taste amazing. Oh, some. Third two, I think. And now, let's I don't know. Let's go. It's sad now we fill it up with the olive oil. You have to cover it. So. Gotta get all the hair out. Look at the bubbles coming out. After drying for five days, we got this 
Sun-dried tomatoes in olive oil! Yay! You happy? My head like it. I'm very happy. After five days, we got this. <laughs> Beautiful.